question, what does the Norman Conquest tell us about the medieval world? So the Normans conquered Anglo-Saxon England in a famous year, 1066. The Bayeux Tapestry, B-A-Y-E-A-U-X, the Bayeux Tapestry is the most famous record of that. It's a long tapestry kept in the Bayeux Abbey, and it tells the story of the Norman Conquest before 1066, right up to when William the Conqueror conquers England. So what does this Norman Conquest, the Normans conquering England in 1066, what does it tell us about the medieval world? So we think of the medieval world or the Middle Ages, we think of knights, of castles, of people living under kings and lords. So there are several things that it can reveal to us. The Normans were a very accomplished civilization. If you go to the website normancenturies.com, the author, Lars Brownworth, has a series of podcasts, um, about eight or ten podcasts where he discusses where the Normans came from. They came from Viking settlement in northern France and how they eventually conquered England in 1066. So one great resource to use when you're answering that question, what can the Normans tell us about the medieval world, is Norman Centuries podcast. And again, there's a range of documentaries online um, about the Norman Conquest in 1066. You should watch those as you're answering this question. Okay, so as we said, the Normans are an accomplished civilization. They're great, like all accomplished civilizations, they're great engineers. So the Norman Conquest can tell us about engineering in the Middle Ages. Engi engineering in the Middle Ages could have been centered around military attributes, having a great cavalry, cavalry with archers, cavalry or horsemen who have archers and foot soldiers. And these are, and in many cases, the cavalry are the knights you think about when you think about medieval wars and soldiers. So the Normans are great engineers, and their greatest engineering feat is the castle. They introduced the idea of a castle, of building a large dominant structure using either timber or later stone to dominate the landscape. And so when they do conquer England in 1066, they impose castles. And then in a castle is a lord or even a king, a lord or a king. And then all around the castle is the town or village with land that's managed by, or that's worked by serfs. So again, the Normans introduce this idea. This is what they tell us about the medieval world, their introduction of the castle as a defining feature where the Lord would dominate the landscape. And it would literally dominate the landscape because Anglo-Saxon England had a lot of forests, but the Normans cut down these forests and built a castle in the center. So this whole idea of a Lord living in his castle, this medieval idea, comes from the Normans. So the, here again we see how they were great engineers. Now another aspect of the medieval world is hierarchy. We see this in all civilizations in history. We see this in the ancient world, the hierarchy, how people, um, where people rank, either by class or by power. And we see it in the Norman conquest as well. When the Normans conquer, they adhere to a strict hierarchy. At the top of the hierarchy is a king, at the bottom of the hierarchy is the serfs. The serfs are people who are little better than slaves. They're tied to the land. They have to work the land day and night. And they get modest pay, but and they really don't have rights to leave the land. The serfs must obey their lord. Now a lord can a lord in turn will serve the king. So in a king's domain, the land or the area is divided up between lords who are loyal loyal to the king. They can be earls or dukes, or other kind of lords. So a serf belongs to or serves a lord. And the lord, in turn, works under the authority of a king. He rules under the authority of the king. The king is the ultimate ruler. And so a lord is a vassal to the king. If the serfs produce crops, or wealth is produced another way, they pay it to the lord, and the lord, in turn, pays it to the king. That's a triangle. It's a hierarchy. And that's what we think of when we think of the medieval world. We think of these kings and the lords that are loyal to them, 
and the lords that can raise armies for the king, and then in turn the ordinary people who are tilling the land and living in relatively poor conditions and huts, etc., on the land, are the serfs. So this is another thing the Normans tell us or teach us about the medieval world, how the hierarchical system works. And the most important word for this is the feudal system. The Normans in introduced a feudal system to Anglo-Saxon England. So we have the great engineers and we have this feudal hierarchy that the Normans introduced. So another thing that the Normans teach us about the medieval world, and this is one of the most fascinating aspects of the story of 1066, is how lineage or pedigree or heritage, all these words are hereditary lines of succession work. Lineage or succession. Succession, there are rules and laws of succession, and succession determines who rules. In fact, the Norman conquest was a war of succession. Who should succeed Edward as the ruler of England? So that word is very important, succession. William the conqueror, the Norman ruler, said, I am the appropriate successor to Edward. And Harold, the Anglo-Saxon king, said, no, I am the successor to Edward. And this was the war, the Battle of Hastings in 1066. And as you dig deeper, you see that succession was a very complex idea. And we see that the most important unit in the medieval world is your house. Your house, which is essentially your family. So it's not like we would think today, a house being doors and windows and a building. Your house is actually your, your group, almost your clan or your tribe. And so William, the Norman leader William in Normandy and France had his house around him, and in England Harold had his. And so who was your father, who was your mother, who was your uncle, your grandfather? Where you came from is your lineage. And your lineage would determine if you had a right, if your house had a right to rule a territory. So when Edward the Confessor died, a lot of powerful earls and dukes said, well, my father or my grandfather or I'm a cousin, I have a right to rule in his place. I have the lineage. And it's a fascinating tale, and we can see Emma of Normandy at the center of it where she was married to Danish King Canute. The Danish King Canute was married to Emma, and she later married in Normandy as well. And so William was a distant relative of hers, and she was also married to Anglo-Saxons and again also married to Dane. So what we see in 1066 is a war of succession between people who were related to Danish rulers or they were related to Anglo-Saxon rulers or they, had, they were from Normandy. And they are all going to duke it out, literally. They're all going to fight it out as to who should rule England after Edward the Confessor died. And this is a great example of how territories are ruled in the medieval world. This is how rule is determined. It's certainly not a democracy. It's all about your lineage. It's all about your heritage. Are you a lord in good standing, a king in good standing, that has the family lineage, has the powerful house, that has the family lineage, pedigree, heritage, that entitles you to rule. That's essentially what the Norman Conquest in 1066 was about. So as you listen to Lars Brownworth's podcast, or as you watch a documentary on 1066, what it really teaches us is how wars of succession work, how lineage works, how heritage works. And one last thing that the Norman Conquest teaches us, it teaches us a little bit about the Vikings. What it really does is undermine the stereotype of the Vikings. What does that mean? It undermines the stereotype. So think of the stereotype of the Vikings as raiders, as rapists, as pillagers. So what's the opposite of that stereotype is the Vikings as settlers. So the Vikings settle. As Lars Brownworth's podcast shows, the Vikings under Rollo settle in northern France. And soon after a few generations, they become the Normans. 
the Northmen, the Vikings, become the Normans, a civilization in its own right. They settle in northern France, and they expand their power from there and settle in England and establish a line in England that continues today. So far from being simple rapists and pillagers and warriors, the Vikings are actually great settlers and founders. They essentially found a Norman dynasty. So that's a great lesson. That's a great thing that the Normans teach us about the medieval world, is that the Vikings essentially settled and gave birth to the medieval world. Far from being this just wild band of warriors, they're, they are the great settlers. They are the great founders. So there are four things about the Norman conquest. It's a great feat of engineering that the Normans introduced to Anglo-Saxon England, the story of wars of succession, the story of what the Vikings gave to the medieval world by founding